special because of our special honored guest, the Lord Jesus Christ. And we're here today knowing that he is with us and that he is for us. And we're privileged here as family and friends to witness this man and woman becoming husband and wife. And we want to say right from the beginning that it is God's present and forever blessings that are most important in life. This is a very special and unique relationship designed and instituted and implemented by God himself right at creation. This is also a picture of the love of God as we enter into something special with him by faith. Blake and you, Yvette, desire to enter into this marriage relationship. You want to become husband and wife, knowing that the richest blessings of God will be yours and those in your family, and you, even you among their friends. So today, you are promising God, and hopefully all of us are as well, that we will be faithful to all that God intends to give to us, especially to the two of you as husband and wife. You know today that because marriage was created by God, and because we as human beings who are weak and frail, don't have the power and wisdom to honor our promises at our own strength, this ceremony is a statement that we need the Lord to provide for us in every way. Paul wrote, God demonstrated his love for us, and while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. He also said that when we enter into marriage, that we should do something, and do it thoughtfully, prayerfully, with advice and counsel, soberly, knowing that this is the will of God. So I ask you, Kamata, who gives this woman to be married to this man? No matter what. This afternoon, I have the privilege of reading a special poem for Blake and Yvette. It's entitled, Touched by an Angel, written by Maya Angel. We, unaccustomed to courage, exiles from delight, live coiled in shells of love. Until love leaves its high, holy temple and comes into our sight to liberate us into life. Love arrives and in its train come ecstasies, old pleasures old memories of pleasure, ancient histories of pain. Yet, if we are bold, love strikes away the chains of fear from our souls. We are weaned from our timidity. In the flush of love's light, we dare be brave, and suddenly we see that love costs all we are and will ever be. Yet, it is only love, 
true love from God, which sets us free. Thank you. This song is very meaningful for me. We will sing it in Swahili as it was sung when we were married with my lovely Gabriel. And I am really, I'm really blessed and I praise the Lord so that I can sing it to my own daughter. This, this song says, Where there is love, Everything is okay. Where there is love, there is a smile. Where there is love, even the food tastes wonderful. And the word is love, you don't know when it's a time. Thank you. 
have the privilege of reading from God's most holy word today. The scripture reading chosen for today is Paul's first letter to the Corinthians, chapter 13, verses 1 through 8. It's the well-known passage on love. As Pastor has said, the most honored guest here today is the Lord God, Jesus Christ, and the Holy Spirit. And I invite you, in your mind, everywhere I read the word love today, to substitute the triune God for the word love as we read through this. First letter of Corinthians, chapter 13, verses 1 through 8. If I speak in the tongues of men and of angels, but have not love, I am a noisy gong or a clanging cymbal. And if I have prophetic powers and understand all mysteries and all knowledge, and if I have all faith so as to remove mountains, but have not love, I am nothing. If I give away all I have, and if I deliver up my body to be burned, but have not love, I gain nothing. Love is patient and kind. Love does not envy or boast. It is not arrogant or rude. It does not insist on its own way. It is not irritable or resentful. It does not rejoice at wrongdoing, but rejoices with the truth. Love bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. Love never ends. As for prophecies, they will pass away. As for tongues, they will cease. As for knowledge, it will pass away. this is in a few minutes you blend the stands together in such a beautiful and symbolic way. God has uniquely brought the two of you together. And it's because the, uh, they, that God loves you very deeply and you love that. That he has a special plan for you as you become husband and wife. I believe that weddings in a unique way are a taste of heaven. We have people here from Africa that represent the richest of traditions for you. And people and, and the heritage that's all represented in your life with them. Your mother spoke of your grandmother today, Blake, as you remember her and how special she was in your family. And the heritage that you bring here as well. So we come here today to remember and to acknowledge Jesus Christ, who has given so much for us. I am honored to be here today, just as all of us are, whether we're family or friends. And there's a joy that we celebrate with the two of you. We rejoice with you. And if there were a way that we could raise our hands and bless you, we want to do that as well. But this ceremony, when you become husband and wife, represents the kind of life that Jesus Christ has made possible for you. Many people think about marriage being successful and being so that you are happy. And of course, we all want happiness. But when you stop and think about it, who's happy all the time? We have to have um, a number of children. We have to be married to the right person, a good job, enough money. We have to have your own home. We have to have good health, good communication in your marriage. Will that make you happy and successful? Contentment comes from a different place. It comes in your marriage, Blake, and, and Yvette, and making the connection between the amazing love of God and the love that you have for one another. And yes, I think all of us who are here know that the focal point of this ceremony is the Lord Jesus. He has done something for all of us that we never could do for ourselves. And it's best understood about how God, Jesus Christ made flesh, truly humbled himself. How he literally left heaven, and remember that at Christmas time, and we remember here that he came here to live with us on earth. He came on a special love mission with the purpose of dying in order that we might live. He came to die in order to establish a healthy and complete relationship with God for all who would believe in him. And Jesus Christ removed everything that keeps people forever separated from God. He did this while none of us could do anything to repair the brokenness that there is between ourselves and God. 
And that's why, as I said earlier, God demonstrated his love for us. And while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Whereas Paul said somewhere else, you know the grace and love of the Lord Jesus Christ, that though he was rich, yet for your sakes he became poor, so that you, through his poverty, might become the richer. What did Jesus die for you? Was that Jesus died for you? But more than that, he lives for you. And on your wedding day, we focus on this spiritual but very real message and talking about the love of God as something that we've experienced. If I would have had the privilege of spending some time in premarital counseling with you, I would have talked about the things that everybody understands to be at the heart of God's plan for marriage, that the two of you would be friends. I'm not only friends, but good friends. In fact, that you would become great friends that you together would live a selfless life. There's too much selfishness in the world. It's too much about us individually. But when the two of you come and Blake, you say, this woman will be first in my life. And you say to yourself as well, this man will be first in my life, obviously after Christ. You will have something so unique that the world will wonder, what is the difference of this guy? Also faithfulness certainly physical faithfulness, but mental and emotional faithfulness. Of all the women in the world, Blake, this woman is special to you. Of all the men in the world today, this man is special to you. And you both know and have a privilege that the love that God has shown to you, you can give to each other. He makes it possible for you to see it, to experience it, and to give it away but especially between the two of you. And you know, that's what's going to make you something that is such a needed example in the world today. And however God uses you, whatever form that takes, it all begins by making Jesus Christ number one. I am so honored to be here today. And I want to just say, you know, these symbols, when your father kissed you, it represents how both families want to bless you. When uh, Dr. Joe read for us from the scriptures today. It was a statement that we want to have the foundation for marriage on the word of God. In a few moments, Blake, when, uh, that when you share your vows together, it's going to mean that you have a deep and living commitment to the promises that God has made to you. And even when you blend your sands, it's just a new and fresh way of the unity candle. There is a representative, the two of you becoming one as husband and wife. Even this, this meditation symbolically represents the opportunity that you both have to have Christ in the right place. Blake, and as I choose with your will to love each other unconditionally and completely with your attitude, your words, and actions, and depend on God's power, it will be days when it's hard. Now, apply everything that you know and even grow in what you know so that you can give the same kind of love to one another that God has given to you. I choose my words carefully. And today I want to say to you that God is good for you. In fact, God has great things for you. But it's dependent upon how you trust him, how you include him, and how you obey him. You will have a wonderful marriage, and Jesus has a wonderful place. May all of us be that way. Let me share this prayer together. Father, we're here with great joy and appreciation of the many, many things you do for us. We want to thank you for the lives of Blake and of Beth. We thank you for their families who love them deeply. And on this special day, when these two become husband and wife, we ask that your richest blessing would be theirs as they trust in you. And may every day they receive your love and your wisdom and your strength and your peace. And may their joy be great as they develop their relationship together and also with you. We pray in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. For additional vows, please join hands together and face each other. Blake, I want to ask you to repeat after me, please. I, Blake, take you, Yvette. I, Blake, take you, Yvette. To be my wedded wife. To be my wedded wife. To have and to hold. To have and to hold. From this day forward. From this day forward. For better, for worse. For better, for worse. For richer, for poorer. For richer, for poorer. In sickness and in health. 
in sickness and in health. To love and to cherish. To love and to cherish. As long as we both shall live. As long as we both shall live. According to God's word. According to God's word. I Yvette, please repeat after me. I Yvette, take you, Blake. I Yvette, take you, Blake. To be my wedded husband. To be my wedded husband. To have and to hold. To have and to hold. From this day forward. From this day forward. For better, for worse. For better, for worse. For richer, for poorer. For richer, for poorer. In sickness and in health. In sickness and in health. To love and to cherish. To love and to cherish. As long as we both shall live. As long as we both shall live. According to God's word. According to God's word. And there's a pledge that you have for how sincere you are in making these promises. What are they? These rings. Every day, when you see these rings on your ring finger, it's going to be a statement of love. It's going to be a statement of promise. It's going to be a statement of faith. And so you know that you can trust this ring, Yvette, and that you can trust this ring, and that you need her to live. You're in a very special relationship here on earth. Blake, would you take this ring, please, and place it on a vest ring finger, and then repeat after me. With this ring, I thee wed. With this ring, I thee wed. And with all my worldly goods. And with all my worldly goods. I give you. I give you. In the name of the Father. In the name of the Father. And of the Son. And of the Son. And of the Holy Spirit. And of the Holy Spirit. Is it, would you take this ring and place it on Blake's ring finger, and repeat after me. This ring I give you. This ring I give you. In token and pledge. In token and pledge. Of my constant faith. Of my constant faith. And abiding love. And abiding love. In the name of the Father. In the name of the Father. And of the Son. And of the Son. And of the Holy Spirit. And of the Holy Spirit. When Jesus Christ gave us communion or the Lord's Supper, or some of you may know it as the Eucharist, he wanted to give us a symbol that would really help us to understand who he was and what he had done for us. He wanted us to understand the significance of faith in his body given and his blood shed for us, what it meant that he died. And so today, we're not going to have all of you partake, but the two of them are going to partake and they're going to do this because it is a statement of their faith in Christ. And it's a statement that they have hope that what God said, he will complete and, and take care of us. For as Jesus said on the night in which he instituted or began communion, he took a loaf of bread and he broke it. And he said that we should take it and eat it. So if you have that, you take it to us. And eat it, please, in remembrance of Jesus Christ. And while the bread represents the body of Christ given for us, the cup represents the blood of Jesus, knowing that through what he has done, he has forgiven us, and how it is forever. So I invite you first to bread drink in remembrance of Jesus Christ. And now for you, Blake, to do the same. During this special moment, we are also inviting them in a moment to take time now to blend the sand together. And as they do so, we will ask them to come forward. Thank mm -hmm. you. 
the first day of my life That's where I was born Right in the doorway I went out in the rain Suddenly everything had changed They're spreading Let's get some on the beach Yours is the first face that I saw share a prayer and then invite you in just a moment to join in the Lord's prayer with me. But I wanted to just remember that since this is a very Christ-centered time, we want to ask God's blessing on this couple. Let's pray together. Heavenly Father, we come to you as the one who has made us. You are the one who continues to give us life. It was through your grace and mercy and the gift of Jesus Christ which we're able to know who you really are and how we can live with you forever. We're thankful that we realize how important you are in all of our lives. So we are asking your blessing on this man and woman today so that each day they'll have the wisdom and power to live faithfully together and to grow in their love for you and one another. As Blake and Yvette have become husband and wife here today and have shared these vows, may we all be reminded of your forever promises made to us. We get the pic bigger picture for life itself. We pray that this couple will draw deeply on them each and every day. In fact, we pray that each one of us will be wise enough to seek you and trust you personally for our own forgiveness and for our needs. How good it is to know that you provide beyond what we can even hope or think of as we trust you. So let's pray together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, 
And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. I think we are all ready for the pronouncement and for the kiss. For as much as Blake and Yvette have consented in holy marriage, because they have confirmed the same by giving and receiving a ring, by the authority committed to me as a minister of the gospel of the grace of God, I now affirm them to be husband and wife according to the laws of God and the laws of the state of Tennessee. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Blake, you may turn in. special announcement that there will be nothing special here. You should wait and be seated and remain seated until the ushers come to dismiss you. So please stay seated. And then you should then go to the Holiday Inn, which I believe is on Rowan Street in Johnson City for this reception. Well, ladies and gentlemen, I am happy to be able to congratulate and introduce to you Mr. and Mrs. Blake Young.